The case for transformational change is much less a preference and more a critical necessity. I'm Annie Hood. Hello and welcome to Well Intel Daily. This is the podcast that makes well-being work for you and your business. The concerns around climate change, inequalities, mental health and isolation in the community are reinforcing the opinion that measuring progress by economic activity alone or by GDP is far too simplistic. Money matters, but it isn't what matters most to the majority of people. It's things like safety, belonging, one's own health and happiness, being a part of something, being seen, heard and valued. The well-being of everyone is being born through cohesive society and governance, that is, creating a culture that prioritises all of those things. I'm going to give you a few examples. In Wales, the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act landed in 2016, and it gathers the red threads of social, economic and environment and anchors them through the lens of wellbeing culture. And they have appointed the world's first future generations commissioner. It recognises the growing separation, the disconnectedness between people. And it seeks to bring all of those threads back together cohesively. In New Zealand, it's the wellbeing outlook or the wellbeing budget that Jacinda Ardern became globally known for. The Club of Rome are responsible for the 2022 Earth for All report. And that's the report that underlines our collective responsibility for growth within planetary limits in a single generation. That leads on climate, but it includes human well-being, ethics and values. And in the UK, the World Wellbeing Movement launched almost a year ago, whose Mission it is to put well-being at the heart of decision-making, both in business and public policy. And their objectives for transforming the world are three. Number one is to adopt a simple and universally acceptable measure of well-being. Number two, to share best practices. And number three, to build a community that influences policy makers. And whether you're a business person you head a government department, you're a teacher or a citizen. All of these organisations matter because not only do they have strength through their own identity, together they help to bring a more rapid momentum to the shift we talk so much about from a majority focus on money and performance to a more balanced 50-50 strategy that says people matter. And if you're not already embracing wellbeing culture and policy for your people, you need to begin. It will be tougher the longer you leave it. It takes a village and these bodies and organisations are all neighbours. Tomorrow, it always comes down to who you trust. Do share, follow and review and of course, be well.